Hey guys, what's up? Uh, I thought I'd make a little video on the internals of this blaster um, because I've gotten a lot of requests about it. Uh, probably about 30 people or so have emailed me or contacted me somehow saying, hey, I'd like to know the internals of the blaster. Can you take pictures? Whatever. Blah, 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 blah. Make me a write-up. This and that. Uh, I am not making a write-up, but um, yeah, here's a little video. So basically, step one, what you have to do is carve out all this section of the shell here until your tank can pretty much fit inside. Next thing that you're going to have to do is you see this ridge right there of the stock shell and see how it's ground down there so you can basically see through the blaster. You see? So that's my finger on the other side. You have to grind this completely flush and don't worry that it grinds through the shell a little bit. That's fine. Um, do like the whole ridge basically. And um, that allows this part of your tank to fit into the shell without like bulging the shell. Uh, next shell modification you're gonna have to do is um, that little slit there. You see the slit beside the uh, uh, polycarb. So what that allows is it allows this groove or this uh, ridge on your tank to fit into the shell. And how you get the measurements for that is. You put your tank where you want it. In my case, I put the front of the tank touching the very front of where the uh, jam door slot would be. And then I took all my measurements from there. So it's about, I don't know, a quarter, or no, maybe three eighths back from this uh, thing here, that wall there. The slot is about three eighths back. Uh, but you're just going to have to eye it all. Um, there is no real solid measurements. It totally depends on where you put the tank in the shell. Um, so I'm just going to put this all in and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, so hopefully you have your tank mounted now. Uh, we're going to do the trigger mech. So get, your, get an extension spring and do it so it's pulling the um, lever this way towards the barrel. And that just helps with the snappy trigger pull and make sure this doesn't flop around. Next, get a wire and tie it from your lever to your trigger here. And the tension of the wire needs to be so... You see the pin back there and the lever? The tension of the wire needs to be just right so that your lever isn't pulling on the pin at all. But it's not away from the pin. You want it like as close as the, pin, the back of the pin as close to the back of the pin as you possibly can get it without pulling the pin back. That's ideal. Um, next, what you want to do, and this isn't totally necessary, I just found I got a little bit more performance, like just slightly more performance from doing this. Um, you grind down the uh, trigger there so it's flat, then you cut the uh, spring rest sides there, extend that little hole or that little slot, and then snip off maybe three mils of the uh, back of the uh, spring little post right there. And all that lets you do, oops, sorry. All that lets you do is pull the trigger back slightly further. And that allows the valve at the front of the tank to be more open, allowing the air to escape faster. Uh, at least that's what I think. Um, and I did get a performance increase from it. Uh, so, about mounting the tank, I forgot to go over that. Uh, it's basically just mounted with uh, epoxy putty mold. So, once your shell is all ground out like that, get about a grape-sized piece of epoxy, like a large grape. Uh, two of those, mix them up, of course. Put it on each side of your shell, right about where this ridge is, or where the tank... Like, when the tank is in the shell, where this ridge would be, put that epoxy putty, if that makes sense. Hopefully it does. Uh, and then lube up the tank so uh, it doesn't stick. Close up the shell, screw it together, let it sit for however long your epoxy needs to cure. Uh, it's probably like at least half an hour. Take it apart and you should have a nice mold and that'll keep the tank from moving. And that's the main thing that's keeping that tank in here. Uh, you can probably make another mold up front uh, right here if you want. But I, I just made one and it's been holding up fine. I've had this blaster for a very long time. Uh, now... The slot here at the front where the breech is. So I'm going to give you guys some measurements. Um, be right back. Okay, so got my calipers here. And this is going to be in uh, inches or imperial measurements. So your slot. 
is going to be approximately three quarters of an inch back from the front of the tank. Uh, excuse me for a second. And then is going to be about 4.3 inches from the front of the blaster. And it is, sorry, it's hard to do this with one hand. It is about two inches or so. Yeah, about two inches uh, tall or whatever. So hopefully you got that. Um, that's pretty much all the measurements you need to know. Uh, if you want to know the size of the polycarb, did it about an inch? Well, one inch and 360 thou, but or 320 thou. But don't worry about the uh, thousands. Just uh, do it about about an inch by an inch by two and a half inches, something like that. And it's not important. I just happen to like that shape. I cut it freehand not a big deal um, and then if you want to know exactly where I put the uh, little gash here it is hmm, where's a good reference point so go from that screw port approximately is approximately an mm, yeah okay we'll go from the back of our cut the back of the slot is about one about an inch back from our uh, slot on the breech, but that will all depend where you cut this and it, like where the tank is because it's going to go uh, vary at least 60 thou like in either direction so yeah everyone's going to do it differently so don't like religiously follow my measurements it's just a uh, kind of a guide and uh what else do you want to know for measurements i think that should be good uh if we think of anything as we continue in the video, I'll pull this back out again and we'll do something. So, yeah, be right back. Okay, so we're going to go over the breech block now. Uh, it's just a piece of brass. Oh, you probably want to know how long that is. That would, that would definitely help. So, the brass... Oop. The brass is about 1.8 inches. The PVC is about 1.3 inches, and uh, that little nub on there is just some half-inch polycarb, uh, just like how Nam did it. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I thought that was really cool how he did it, so I, I copied him on that. Uh, my dart slot is approximately 1.3 inches, and this piece of brass is, uh, well, it's actually longer because it's glued into here. But the part sticking out is about three inches or so. Um, and what you want to do is just glue the brass into the front of the tank, uh, but make sure that your uh, front barrel can still fit onto the uh, part here. Um, so I'm going to put the blaster back together and uh, I'll show you some stuff on the outside that you need to know and we'll go over the barrel. Um, but last thing internally, uh, I don't know if anyone else has done this but I had to extend the pump to get proper uh, compression like for the stroke to be proper so basically what I did is I just got a piece of a uh, another Busby pump that is the same size there's a piece of polycarb that's inside here uh, two set screws on each side and it's all glued together with epoxy um, and then there's another set screw in the top just because I had another one and that's uh, pretty solid uh, I'm, I'm happy with it and you're just going to have to cut a slot in the back of the tank for the, or not the back of the tank, sorry, the back of the shell so this uh, pump can slide through. And if you want to do the stock removable mod, uh, make sure you do that while the blaster's open. And uh, yeah, so now we'll go over the barrel and all that other stuff. Okay, one last thing internally, uh, you just want to make sure that your breech can slide all the way forward and you know I know this is common sense but I'm just saying it for the people that don't know make sure that it can slide all the way back and close your slot and make sure that the brass can completely open and go into the uh, slot there see how there, there's that piece of brass it needs to be able to go in there so don't secure this brass in there 
with E tape or something that's going to block that. You have to do everything up front. And uh, when you're doing your pull handle, doesn't matter if you made this little nub like I did um, or you do something else, make sure it's at the front of your brass there um, or at the front of your breech block. I've tried it at the back and I've tried it at the front and the front seems to be more comfortable and smoother. So just my experience, but try that. And now we will go over the barrel. The barrel is pretty easy to do. You just select your length of brass. Uh, I forget what I use. I think it's 22 inches or something. And then see down in there, the PVC that's housing the brass isn't all the way uh, up to this barrel here. You want to do it two or three inches back and that just allows this orange barrel to go into the front of the muzzle there. Um, so do that. Get your brass glued into your PVC. And then to make your slot, once the brass is glued into the uh, PVC here, you're going to want to open your breech, insert your barrel, and let me just do that really quick. So you would insert your barrel, and when your breech is open, you'd have brass here. Uh, since I've already cut mine, you can see the, the slot, but yours won't be cut. And then you get the outline of your breech here, and you get like a fine point sharpie, and draw the where your breech opening will be. Pull your breech out, or your, your barrel off, pull that out, and then cut that um, marks the, that you've made with the sharpie. And then when you attach your barrel, it'll be perfectly in line with your slot here. Uh, make tightening rings if you want to. Uh, you don't have to. I did because my darts are a little bit loose. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Installing it into the long strike barrel here. You can glue it in if you want. I used screws, four screws there. Um, and you're going to want to screw the PVC in or glue the PVC in with your brass before you do this because it won't work. Um, so after you've gooped the brass into the PVC, attach the PVC into your long strike barrel, put it in, open your breech, draw the lines, take it out, and then cut those lines, and you should be good. Um, with your lever, uh, it's pretty easy, like you don't really have to do too much. Um, I'll show you how I did mine. It's just a nylon rod, and then I cut threads on either sides of the nylon rod so I could fit quarter 20 um, nuts on there um, or nylon nuts but you could just use a bolt uh, it doesn't matter I just didn't have a bolt long enough so I'm like oh whatever I'll just cut threads on the uh, nylon that was the easiest thing for me and then for the pump handle I simply just used a uh, PVC elbow with some thin wall PVC inside of it half inch uh, so it fits nicely on there and then that is just screwed on um, trying to think anything else that you need to know. Uh, that's, I think that's it. Uh, you know, this isn't really a first mod build or like an easy build. It's not hard, but I just, I wouldn't recommend, like if you've never done a brass breech before, maybe brass breech a night finder or something or that first so you can get used to brass and whatever, but it's not that hard, but it's not super easy. It's probably like an intermediate mod. So just... Take that into consideration before you go cutting apart your uh, long strike and whatever. Long strikes suck anyway, so who cares? But yeah, I am rambling now, so I guess I will talk to you later, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video, and this helps whoever is trying to build one of these. So, yep, thanks for watching. Bye.